Hi there. Welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Chakra. Um, we're back again, thank goodness, at the Dancing Trousers Cookery School. It's Christmas time, of course, and we're going to be, I am going to be learning how to make a couple of Christmas dishes. I think pigs in blankets and possibly mince pies. I'm looking forward to it very much. Come with me. So here we go again. I really like those pigs in blankets. Thank you That's very much. Delicious, they are delicious. Mm. I still have the flavour in my mouth. It's wonderful. So tell me, what on earth are we doing here? We are moving on to sweet and delicious Christmas treats. So we're going to make mince pies and you are going to make the pastry. Oh, right. So we're going to make a rich short crust pastry, uh, which is very straightforward, very simple mm. to do. It was using just butter. Um, although lard is delicious in pastry, obviously it doesn't work for everybody, particularly if they're vegetarian. They won't want an animal fat right. in there. Okay. Um, so we're doing all butter. And to give you an idea of how buttery this is, we've got about 150. 15 grams of plain flour to 75 grams of butter. So Crikey. that's a okay. lot, a lot of butter. It's yeah. more, more than half the weight of, of the flour. Yeah. So first things first, Robin, we're also going to add a tablespoon of caster sugar. So pop that into right. your flour. This is pre-measured, is it? Yes, so it is. Brilliant. And that's, again, just to make this a rich, sugary, delicious, lovely pastry. Yeah, that feels like quite a lot of sugar. That's, that's yeah. Well, it, again, mm. it is. But this is, you know, mince pies are a treat, aren't they? Yeah, a yeah, few indeed. mince pies over the course of Christmas won't do you any harm. Right, give that a little mix through with your hand. Right, okay. In you go, that's it. And now you can tip all your little butter cubes in. Now I've weighed that out for you and it right. has just come out of the fridge so that butter is really nice and hard mm -hmm. which you need when you're making pastry by hand because if the butter is soft it can start to get greasy very quickly right. and the result of that is you'll end up with a pastry that when it bakes it will be tough. Oh right. So okay. it's important to keep uh, the, the butter cool. Now I am going to show you, I'm going to mm -hmm. do a very quick demonstration then you're going to do it. Okay. So you are going to to make this motion as you rub the fat and the flour together right. so you're actually properly moving your thumbs over your fingertips try to avoid doing this which I see people doing sometimes pushing squishing, the two yeah the because thing. then the butter will get greasy very quickly uh, right, okay. the other thing to remember is give it some air mm -hmm. so try to work up from the ingredients a little because if you do it all down here again all the heat from your hands is getting transferred into the butter very quickly so this right, is what I mean okay. I want you to do this I want you to come up out yeah. of the bowl as you're making the pastry so just give it a little bit of space and a little bit of air as you rub those two ingredients together so that's right, enough okay. from me you can get on with no, the hard work now this. yeah I do remember being told by somebody many years ago that cold hands were a major advantage when making pastry is that well is that right I'm, I, yeah, I mean it, it would be oh it's on the move it, it <laughs> would be I guess um, I don't think it would make an enormous no, difference. Okay. I think maybe it's a way of making people with not very good circulation feel better about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, I, I fear my circulation is much too good. So I'm, if, I, if my hot hands ruin this... Pastry, no, no, they won't at all. <laughs> and, and what we're aiming for, and this will take a moment or two, this isn't something that you can, you can turn no. around that quickly by hand, although it's very simple. Um, we want this to end up looking, uh, I would say, a bit like damp sand. Right. So that's what the consistency should look like when you've finished... Um, rubbing the, the fat and the flour together. Yeah, right, give it a bit more welly. I think you're being okay, very it kind be too, to it. Too, yes, too, wet, too kind. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now, whilst you're doing that, I'm only going to help you out insofar as I'm going to separate your egg, but that's all I'm doing for okay, you. Fair so you carry on, you carry on with that. That's fine. I will we, do the egg um, separating. We will share the share the jobs. Because your binding like agent idea. for your pastry is going to be an egg yolk. One egg yolk. So okay. let's, uh, well, I demonstrated that I could separate an egg well, on you the did. Show I, you did. I think so we, I think we know that you are very capable of doing that. <laughs> so there we go. One As I can see, this um, takes a little while. Yolk. We may have to... Uh, there we go. One egg yolk ready to go. 
Oh, look, you're getting there. That's looking good. That's it's, looking good. It's taking on a different texture Yeah, altogether. exactly. The colour will change because the right. fat will make the flower start to look a pale golden colour. Yeah. Um, that's looking pretty good. I think you're not that far away. Still some a little bit more space between your hands and the mixture, sir. Just give it a little bit there more. That's it. There we go. And make sure you get right down to the bottom where there may be naked flower lurking that hasn't yeah. had the benefit okay. of the fat yet. Know that you're not far off that at all. There's still some um, fairly substantial pieces of butter in just there. Just work those it? individually. Pick okay. them out and just work them through. They'll all disappear in time. No, Don't see. worry. Yes, okay. That's Without it. actually squeezing them too tight. That's it. Okay. Looking good. It is a very rich pastry, so it's slightly more difficult because of that, because you've got quite a lot of butter to work through. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Unsalted butter, it's worth Always saying. Always unsalted butter. Always right. unsalted butter, because that way you're in control of the amount of salt. However, I think adding a pinch of salt to, to even a sweet pastry is not a bad thing, just a little pinch right. to make the flavour of everything jump up a little bit more. Okay. I think you might be nearly there. Yes, yeah, so I'll just get rid of the last yep. couple of little lumps of butter. There we go. I think we're nearly there now. That's it, and it starts to take on that crumbly quality. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's a bit like sort of sawdust. Perhaps that's a bit tastier, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right, I'll show you a little knack for seeing if you've got any lurking big bits, which is if you yeah. give the bowl a uh, shake yes. like that, all the larger bits will come up to the surface. Now, so clever. you've got a few just to work through, so okay. just do those last few bits. Well, But we're not going to worry too much if there are a couple of lumps of butter. We're not going to worry because when you need this, ooh, yeah, something like ready. Uh, when yeah. you need this, those will, those will come out, so yeah, we're okay. not too worried about yeah, that. Right, okay. Look at that Perfect. Package. That looks pretty good That's to me. Right. Give your hands a little wash, Robin, because you're going yeah. to mix up the egg next. So right. let's grab you a tea towel. Yes, you'd be surprised how much effort that is for arthritic old hands like mine. Well, you've done a lovely job. That's got a very <laughs> nice texture to it. That's great. OK, so your next job is you're going to add a tablespoon of cold water to your egg yolk. Right. So just pop it in with the egg yolk. That's it. And give the two things a jolly good mix round. Right. And then for a bit of seasonal zippiness, mm -hmm. we're going to put a tiny amount of orange oil in there as well, just to give our pastry a little orange flavour. You could zest an orange in, but we're being lazy. Right. Um, so we're okay. going to use really nice quality orange oil. So mm -hmm. because orange oil is incredibly strong, mm -hmm. whenever you're measuring something that's got a very strong flavour, don't do it over the bowl of ingredients, ah. just in case just your hand slips and a great deal of orange oil goes in. Right. Always do it over a separate bowl and then you're in control. So yes, yes, a couple of drips into there will do That's us. That's a very good tip. That's perfect. Like that. Pop that in with your egg. Yep, lovely. Grand. Now, make a little well in the middle of your pastry. Right. Well, it'll be pastry in a minute. And mm. I would say, give the egg a little stir again, just to get the orange oil mixed in. Right. And add two thirds of it, because we can always come back for a bit more. So, oh, okay. to, just by eye, two thirds of it. And keep hold a bit back. Lovely. Okay. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a tiny splodge more. Maybe a little more. There we go. Right, lovely. Now, I've given you a palette knife because at this stage you don't want to make the mixture too warm by putting your hands in again. So right. scoop that round. Oh, I can smell that orange oil. Can yeah, you smell? So it smells right. fantastic. It's incredible Give smell. that a scoop round. Right. And what will happen as you do this is that the pastry will start to clump together and that's what we're after. Yes, I see. And the egg will make it a beautiful colour. This is very rich. Just using egg yolk makes it a beautifully rich pastry. Mm. You could use water if you didn't want to use an egg yolk. That would be fine. And that's it. And scoop yes, but round. why on earth would anybody not? <laughs> yes, well, the richness <laughs> of an egg yolk. There we go. Yeah. So that's coming together. That's coming together quite nicely. Keep going. And I think we're probably going to go for... While you more. scoop, I'm going to pop a tiny bit more in. All right. There we go. And you incorporate that lot. And then I think we are going to get you to get your hand in again. See whether we can pull that all together. 
Oh, that's okay. looking good now. Yeah, that's looking really nice. It's absolutely amazing. It goes through a stage where it looks like slightly unprepossessing cottage cheese, but right. that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's really starting to pump now. Yeah. So now you can pop your hand in, probably only one hand, and just right. pull that together, and it should form a nice ball of, of dough. Okay. There yeah. we go. Look at that. That's looking good. Perfect. Perfect. Right, pop it back in the bowl just for yeah. a moment. That's grand. Okay, so what we're now going to do is flour your work surface just lightly mm -hmm. and you can turn the pastry out onto there. Right. That's it. Let's have all the little bits. And then I want you to just gently knead it until it forms a nice smooth round of pastry. So it looks right. lovely and okay. smooth throughout. So just gently, yes, that's it. That's sort of gently um, knead it together. Grabbing all the other bits. That's it. Them, Perfect. So that looks very good. That's looking great, actually really nice. Okay, that's it. Pick up just a little bit of extra mm -hmm. flour. That looks really good, actually. That's got a very nice um, consistency. And you can see that where you have those big bits of butter, they kind of come out in the kneading they process, so you don't need to yes. worry. Yeah, so okay. what we're going to do is, I'm going to get you to do one more fold in half, and then I would like you to smooth it out to a sort of big hamburger patty shape. Right. So okay. do another quick knead, get a nice bit of flour on the outside of it, that's it. And now we just need, you can use your other hand for this if you want to, just when you do this, be a little mm. bit gentle with it. So there's a tendency to want to push down with lots of weight, and you don't need mm. to, because it's such a... Um, a lovely soft pastry just gently form it around like that and use use the okay. pads of your finger rather than you a very hot mm. and b bit too forceful to use your palms so just gently pat okay. that around with your fingertips yeah. that's it lovely that's it and exactly right keep moving it to make sure it's not sticking on the bottom which yeah. it's not flatten it out just a touch more for me that looks lovely. Yeah, like that. That's beautiful. And that's got a lovely consistency, nice and smooth, mm -hmm. lo lovely, lovely colour to it. And what we're going to do is put that in the fridge to chill for at least 20 minutes. The right. reason being, you can feel that's very soft now. Mm -hmm. If we tried to roll that out, we wouldn't be able to handle it. It's too soft. So okay. two things have to happen. The butter has to set again mm -hmm. in the fridge, but also the gluten that's in that pastry, which is a protein, needs to relax. All those starch granules have been coated in flour and the whole thing needs to just relax a little right. so that when you roll it out it will be a lovely thin layer of pastry that's easy to handle. Oh, that's a, a really good tip. I'm so not sure I'd have into a bag that. and that's going to go into the fridge for 20 to 30 minutes. Right, I go. okay. I think we'd better do that magic wand thing again. Okay, so this has come out of the fridge after... Yes, it's had about 20 minutes, about 20 minutes to right, okay. set up to get a little bit firmer so that you mm. can use it. But I did yeah. get it out a couple of minutes ago because we don't want it to be rock hard. If right. it's that cold, the minute you start to roll it, it will crack around the edges. So I've allowed right, yes. it to become, you know, reasonably... Malleable, but malleable. not Malleable, exactly. Yes, okay. So um, let's get that out. Right. And I've lightly floured your work surface so that you can start rolling out. Yeah. Thank you for that. Great stuff. There we go. There we go. Put that was on my safe. Now, um, I will do a very quick demonstration of rolling out and then you're going to do it all. I right. like to put a little bit of flour onto the rolling pin mm -hmm. and just get that rubbed in. And then I tend not to continually turn the pastry over. So what you'll see people doing quite a lot is this constantly turning the pastry over. Now, you'll see it's picking up flour from underneath. If you constantly do that, you're putting flour onto both sides of it, extra yeah. flour that it doesn't need. Right. So I like to keep it this way up, but roll it and turn it. Okay. And roll it and just make sure, I call this talking the baby's bottom. Right. Talk the baby's bottom underneath so that it's not sticking. So right. you're going okay. to roll that until it's mm, four to five millimetres thick. I won't be getting a ruler out, you'll be pleased no, to no. know that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and roughly Round is well, it doesn't matter doing. because we're going to stamp out little circles for oh, our see. mince pie tin. So the okay. thickness is the thing, not the shape. We don't really mind about the shape of the pastry at all. No, okay. While Robin's doing that, I'm going to grease our little mince pie tin so that we're being useful with our time in motion. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm not a huge fan of those incredibly deep mince pies that you get these days. I find they've just got too much mince meat in them. This yeah. is a very old-fashioned tin, but to me, that's the depth a mince pie should be. I think yeah. that is a, a pleasing depth. 
I'm very comfortable so, with that. I mean, that good. is traditionally what, what yes. I would so, remember. Yes, so right. this is a very rich pastry and has a lot of butter in it, but mm -hmm. I'm going to put just a tiny bit of butter into the indentations, but really just a scant little yeah. um, smear round to make sure. We wouldn't want your first ever set of mince pies to stick. That would be yeah, disastrous. That would be more. Um, so... <laughs> I shall just give this a little wipe round. How's that coming? Oh, I don't I think, think you're far off, actually. That's, that's, that's looking right, pretty yeah. good. OK, now it is a small quantity of pastry. We just made a small amount to have a, a, a go yeah. at. Um, I think maybe... Is it about red? Yeah, pretty good. One more roll, I think, and oh, you're there. there. Yeah. Swirly. Looking good and moving beautifully, not sticking at all. So that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so here are your pastry cutters. So the larger one is for the inside of the indentations, the smaller one is for the lids. So start by cutting out. Let, let's just do four to start with to demonstrate what we're doing. So okay. four of those just to get us going. And get as close to the edge of the pastry as you can. Be really... Right, right I'm going to show you a quick... No, OK, right. so I'm going to show you what will make your life easier. These all have a little lip at the top. Yep. Hold the lip really firmly and then just push down once. Try not to twist because what will happen is it will make the edges go ragged. Can you see yeah, there? Yeah. Whereas if you just do one really firmly, it will, it will come out really easily like Good. that. So okay. you do a couple more um, and let's right. use our pastry... Well, because we've got, only got a small quantity, that's it, lovely. Right. Well, there you go, out, there you go, perfect. perfect. Okay. There we go, and one more for, for the bottoms for now. That's it, spot on. Also, don't press too hard because you'll spoil my lovely table. Right. Okay. Right. So that would be a table. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, now let's do four four lids. So same right. same principle, just one nice firm push down. That's it. Yes, it does. I see. Perfect. Okay. I'll just move the lids here. Oops, nearly right. How are we going to make it? Oh, I think just. so. I think just and just. That's going to work out well. That's the most extraordinary piece of management today, right? Beautiful, beautifully fair. done. And your pastry <laughs> looks lovely, Robin. It's got a lovely colour and that lovely smoothness to it. Yeah. No big lumps of butter or anything like no, that. It looks great. Okay. Right. Bearing in mind that these are the ones I've greased for you, yeah. you're going to just gently pop these down and just very carefully push them into the indentations and just right. be okay. gentle with it and pop them down and it all will be well. Perfect. Yes, I see. So they need, need to try and get them the same width, same height every yes, all Yes, ideally. Yep. Yeah. That looks good. Yes. Spot on. This is working. Can't remember which one will do you. Yes, that one. Sexually. That one will do you perfectly. Grand. There you go. Good job. Right. OK, so next we're going to put some delicious mincemeat in. Yeah. A couple of things to say about mincemeat. If you have time and the inclination to make your own mincemeat, it's a lovely thing. It's, it, it's a reasonably long recipe and there is no shame in buying a really good shop bought no. mincemeat and what you can do is enhance it a bit so quite often I might add a little slug of brandy to right. it or uh, grate a little bit of orange zest into it just to give it a little bit of extra something yeah. because there are an awful lot of things to do in the run up to Christmas and if I'm honest I think making your own pastry is more important than making your own yeah. mincemeat no, I think so that makes sense. we've got a perfectly lovely already made mincemeat and yeah. you are going to put a teaspoonful into each of these. Now, don't be over generous. Because this has got so much sugar in it, it will bubble furiously when it's cooking. Yep. If you overfill these, it will spill out and then we'll never get them out of and the tin. So better right. to put a little in and come back for a bit more rather than put too much in and then think, how am I going to get it out now? Okay. That looks good. That, yep. look right? that, that looks about right. Am I allowed to use my yes, you, in fact, I insist on it. Okay. It's the only way. <laughs> That's it. Lovely. And we're going to just push that down a little bit. That's right, it. So okay. there we go. Perfect. Great. So no more than that. That's spot on. So actually a jar of this mincemeat will go a long way. It will go it? a very long way. Mincemeat keeps brilliantly though. So yeah. I have nearly always got a jar that I bought the year before that's still in the larder and I use the following year. And it's matured a bit as well, so it's rather nice. Yes, absolutely. I can imagine. Because it, it's all so sugary that it's yeah. preserved. Full of sugar and, and, and mm. alcohol. Gosh, it is wonderful, isn't it? It's, it's marvellous stuff, this. 
Right. There you go. How does that look? That looks very good. Perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you're allowed to lick your finger as long as Can't you now go and it. wash it. <laughs> okay, I should go and do that very soon. Okay, thing. and then we're going to do lids. <laughs> so for lids, we're going to need a little bit of water. Right. Perfect. So this is very straightforward. Mm -hmm. All you're going to do is with each lid, you're going to maybe use whichever finger feels good, yeah. and you're just going to make your finger damp, no more than damp. You're going to go around the outside with a damp finger, mm -hmm. like so, and then you're going to gently press that in place, like so. Right, so the water is basically sealing it the joint. It will seal the two together. And yes, you don't need anything more complicated than water. It really it doesn't require egg or yeah, anything like that. No, a bit of water okay. will do perfectly well. But that's it, just damp. You don't want to make it soggy because it will actually make the pastry go quite soggy. No, that's, and that's it, soggy. perfect. Right. Delicately done. And then, yes, that's it, just a fingertip round the edge to press it in place. Lovely. Maybe a little bit firmer than that, pressing it in just to make sure it really has sealed. That's it, lovely. That looks good. Oops. Great. OK. Right, while you're doing that, I'm going to get you a small sharp knife, which we're going to need for the next bit. That's it. Now we've heated our oven up, we're at 180 degrees, right. fan again, so 200 electric, because you want these to crisp up nicely and get a good colour on them reasonably quickly, and this size of mince pie will only take 8 to 10 minutes to cook. Right, okay. Okay, that's, that's it, true. beautifully done. Now, your next job is, do you remember when we separated our egg to make the pastry, yeah. nothing is getting wasted. The yolk went in to make the pastry, the white we're going to use for the final element, right. which is this. Pastry brush, not too much egg white on top of your pastry brush, and then you're going to lightly brush the top of the mince pie so that it's glistening, Right. and then get a little bit of lovely caster sugar, and from a height Sprinkle your caster sugar on so that you get a nice even scattering. Right. So okay. that looks about right to me. So off okay. you go. And this gives colour, does it, to the veggies? Is that what it then? does is gives a little glaze to the top and you get a beautiful baked sugar effect on it. So yeah, you'll have that it. lovely sort of crispiness on the top with the, with the caster sugar, which looks very pretty. Mm. It's a pretty effect. And because our caster sugar has got quite a lot of vanilla pods in it, you get a little burst of vanilla flavour oh, as wonderful. well. So. OK, that's a bonus. There we go. So you store your vanilla pods in the sugar? Or yes, you, these are, yeah. because we use so many at the cookery school for custards and ice creams that yeah. we wash them afterwards. If they say they've been steeped in cream and milk, we wash them thoroughly, let yeah. them dry on the windowsill, and then put them into our big canister of caster sugar. And it means the caster sugar gets imbued with a lovely, lovely vanilla flavour. Oh, wonderful. So, and it gives the okay. vanilla pod a second life. And they're quite pricey, so it's yeah. good to do something else with them rather than just chuck it's them away. It's great to use things twice. I, yes. We were, we were, I at some stage or other, we must talk about uh, slow gins. I found a wonderful way to use the slows again. Oh, anyway, that's, that's another well, wonderful. story. Wonderful, we'll, sounds we'll delicious. Right, the very last thing before these go into the oven, which is up to temperature, is you're going to cut a little hole in the top to allow the steam out. Right. I like to do this with a sharp knife, and I just pop it in, and then I turn it in a sort of figure of eight, like that, right. and you get a little hole. Okay. There we go. So it is just a sort of pressure release thing. Yes, it's just stops because it, it gets, yeah, stops it breaking the seal, lets the steam out, we hope. That's it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, lovely. So, Brilliant. the oven's ready for you. Pop these onto the top shelf, Robin. Great stuff. Oh, let oh. me move that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Pop those onto the top shelf. Those there are done. You, you call it the top shelf, but it's, I notice it's pretty uh, it's much in the middle. It's actually the middle. middle. Yes, I meant top of okay, the okay. two that we've no, got on offer. That. Yeah. So you're basically looking at the centre of the oven. Yeah, centre of the oven. And then yeah. what we'll do is, we'll put the timer on for eight. Yeah. But at four minutes, we'll take a look at them and we'll swizzle them round because even in a fan-assisted oven, you still get hot spots oh, right, and okay. things will tend to cook slightly more quickly either at the front or the back. So if it's something where opening the oven door doesn't affect it and it won't with mince pies, mm. I would always recommend turning totally them round right. so they get a really even cover. Is this is true colour. of pretty nearly everything you put in the oven. I mean, is it true of a roast and things like that? Should you, should um, you spin them round? I do, yeah. I, but please don't do it with something like a Victoria sponge. No, because really the entire thing will sink or a souffle yeah. no. but something where air going in won't affect the final product I always have a look at them and just twizzle them Give around a yeah. the just thing. so that the colouring is even all over that makes um, sense. so there we are well, lovely well, we'll we will come wave back. our magic wand again and um, come Perfect. back in a minute or two great stuff
So here we go, Alexis. There they are. There they, they, they are. They do look amazing. I must say, I'm, I'm rather impressed with myself. Well, you, you did. You did really well. <laughs> you you did really well. So these have had uh, eight, just over eight minutes. I twizzled them round halfway through, so we've got yeah. a nice even colour all over them. Um, I've given you an oven glove because obviously that tin is hot. Yeah. Don't put your tongue on it, as I say yeah. to my customers. <laughs> um, now we did grease the little indentations very lightly, so I'm hoping these will pop out with ease. Right. I've given you. This is one of my favourite kitchen implements. This is yeah. called an angled spatula. And it's a sweet little thing and very useful when removing delicate pastry from containers like this. Yeah, so brilliant. pop that underneath and then get your mince pies out onto the wire rack to cool. Okay. And let's hope we are. Oh, look at that. Oh, look. Beautiful. Can't, Just, can't oh, look. There you perfect. go. There we go. They're looking good. Oh, and can you see how they smell great? And you see how the caster sugar has given them that lovely sort of little um, uh, crystallised look on the top. They look I very do. pretty. I know, look very oh, good. Whoop, last one's a monkey. Close. There we go. Beautiful. Look at that. Well done. Well, Fantastic. I think it would only be fair to pop one on a plate so that you can try okay. your efforts. Now, don't burn your... T that's warm, but it's not going right. to burn okay. you. Um, right. And uh, I'll give you I'm a sure small that. fork and a... Spoon. Obviously, you can use your fingers. I would fingers just normally use my I know, fingers, but, but uh, we'll pretend we're being terrible. I've got this rather beautiful fork, which is a knife on the end. Yeah, I know, they're quite good, aren't they? Let's right, well, I was thinking now that means that you will be able to taste Very this. Very good. Bit. This sounds, looks And oh, well done, because wonderful. nothing nothing bubbled out. They stayed beautifully together. Yeah, Let's yeah. test that pastry. Oh, yeah. Mmm. 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 That's really good. Yeah, quite hot. hot. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I love that little vanilla touch. Mm. That's... And you get the orange sugar. just coming through as mm -hmm. well. That's that's a very fine mince pie. Well that's done. Pie. That's absolutely oh, yes. marvellous. I shall have to go home and practice. Very good. That's mm. delicious. Crum mm. Crumbly pastry. Mm. Which is exactly what you hope for. And a million miles nicer than the ones you buy. Mm. I was, I'm surprised by that because I, I know how delicious the ones you buy are. But this is just... I don't know. This is, uh, yes, it's that buttery, crumbly, really short mm. texture to the pastry. That's... Yeah. Are you good? Is that well, what that means? Short, that sort of crumbly, yes, that lovely crumbly, crumbly quality. Yeah. yeah. That's really well, well done. I think that's wonderful. Mm. Well done, Alexis. Thank you very much. You've mm. met yet another dish in my repertoire. I, mm -hmm. should, love, I should go and try that. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Mm. I really did enjoy that. Mince pies on my, my family this year are all going to be homemade. It's for the first time ever. Well, I hope you enjoyed it too. Remember, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Find our website on the coswoldexplorer.co.uk and subscribe for free to our channel. We look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you very much for watching us doing our cookery. We hope you're going to join us again next year. We've had a lot of fun. We hope that you have too. So, from the Dancing Trousers Kitchen, a very happy Christmas. Here's to you all. And uh, incidentally, I apologise about the half-eaten. This was Ross, you know, who may Ross. be filming here, but he's... he's so naughty. You know, there you go. Happy Cheers. Christmas.